Hey, what's happening, guys? I have had this meter now for, oh, I don't know, eight months, ten months or so, something like that. This is the UT61E 22,000 count multimeter. Um, I got it from Banggood, and I wanted to go over what it's been like having this meter around and using it. But before we start, all the meters that I use on this channel were, are intended, and I only recommend their use for low-powered DC uh, home experimentation. Hobby work, if you are a Sparky, if you do this for a living, you're going to want to buy the Fluke with the proper protection to protect not just your career reputation, but also your life. That being said, this is a great meter. It sells for somewhere between $45 and $60, depending on where and when you get it. And I, like I said, I've had it for about eight to 10 months now. And the detractors from this meter are gonna tell you two things. One, there's no backlight, and two, there's no temperature uh, sensing. Well, I haven't needed either, so it hasn't been a bother for me. If those two things are a must for you, then this is probably not the meter for you. There are plenty of other meters out there. In fact, you guys have seen me do a lot of videos on the Aning 8008. Um, as far as value meters go, this is the hands down winner. The 8008 is just superb. But if we want to talk bang for your buck in a full size meter, some folks just like full size meters. The Unity UT61E is absolutely one of my favorites. Um, yeah, so I figured we would put it through a couple of the tests that we use for new meters just to see how it's behaving eight to ten months down the road. Now, everything's digital, so there really shouldn't be any change whatsoever. Now, this has been bouncing around in my bag, and granted, you know, I'm not a full-time engineer on the road anymore, so it doesn't get uh, uh, the use that it would have used to, but you can see... There's uh, there's one scratch on the plastic there, but you know it's looking pretty good. Everything looks really good. All right, let's get set up for run a couple tests. The first test we're going to run is a voltage test, and for that we'll be using the AD what is it uh, 584LH. Uh, this voltage testing here, which allows me to test voltages from two and a half, five, seven and a half, and ten. And before we start doing it with the Unity, we're going to run it through um, the Fluke just to be sure where we got our readings here, and then we can compare them. Okay, the Fluke is online. Let's start at uh, 10 volts. And what do we get? 10.0056. I'm going to record that. 10.0056. Then we'll take it down to uh, 7.5 volts. See what we get. 7.4992. Seven point four nine nine two. Then we will drop down to five. Five point zero one two four. And finally, two and a half volts. Two point five zero five three. Okay, uh, let's uh, do our base values also for resistance. And we'll make sure we're running in the same ballpark. All right. All right, let's start low with 2.2 .2 ohms, 2R2. 2 0.35 2 Next, we'll move up to 1K, 1.0025. Next, 
10.0397. And finally, one meg. Nine nine four points. Nine nine four point six, we'll call it. All right. Okay, now that we have our base voltages, we can check out the unity. So we'll start at two point five volts. Two point five oh four. Then we'll go up to five volts. Five point zero one one. Seven and a half. Seven point four nine eight. And finally the ten volt. Ten point zero zero five. All right, both of these tests were made with the same set of test leads. These are the gold plated probe master test leads. Same set, so we should have the same results. And, you know, very, very close. There's absolutely nothing to complain about there at all. Is resistance. And again, we'll be using. The same cables. Okay, that's there. We go. Hmm. That is a uh, really weird. I have a short in my cable now all of a sudden. Luckily, I say luckily, I always carry a spare set of banana plugs around my neck for just such an emergency. And if we short them together, it should be right there. All right, let's try this again. At 2.2 .2 ohms, 2.29. One K one point oh oh five ten K ten point oh three two and finally one meg. 0.9944. So if we take a look at this and examine our results for the most basic of multimeter tests, you can see that the unity is as accurate as my fluke. So that's a good thing. And like I said, I mean, being that it's a digital meter, I don't really expect anything to change over time. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. So, so far, so good. All right, let's go down here and take a look at some diodes. So we'll put this thing in diode mode. All right. I just have to remember... Which side is which? There we go. So there's a little red LED. There's a purple LED, which it lights it, but it doesn't read it. Green LED. No light, but can read. Yellow LED. Lights it and reads it. And this one is a near ultraviolet LED. Can't light it, nor can it read it. Okay, so regular diodes, we have a couple of them over here. 
The first one is a Schottky, I believe. We'll find out in a second, won't we? How are we going to find out, class? By the voltage drop. Yep, so there's a the Schottky. Now there is a high speed diode, a standard silicon diode. Yep, no problem. We'll check our capacitors real quick. Just make sure which side is the anode and which side is the cathode. I think that's probably a hundred, right? Got to see over there somewhere. Yep, hundred ninety-five. Close enough. There's always tolerances. 100 nanofarad. Hmm. Okay. So, all the tests have passed. They've come through with flying colors. And just to show you, I'm going to read some AC voltage here. You wouldn't want to be reading any AC current. But there's a there's my line voltage. Whoops. My line voltage, and if we go to frequency, oh, it didn't like that, did it? All right, let's try that again. There's 60 hertz. Good enough. So all in all, it's good. Uh, downsides, again, no light, no um, temperature reading. And even though I always say I don't like multimeters that use a 9-volt battery. I'm pretty sure that's what this one uses. Yeah, 9-volt battery. There, you can see it there. That's the battery that came with it. And, uh, you know, eight months later, it's still going strong. So I really, I really can't complain there, you know. It all seems to be going pretty well with this. If I can figure out how. There we go. To get that back on. So, now I guess the big question is... Do I recommend this meter? Over the $20 ANANG? Or do I recommend this meter over the $10 meter K, which basically has the same functions plus the light? Well, if I had to buy one meter out of these three, which one would I buy? Frankly, I would buy this one. And that's my preference. I like the size of it. I like, let's move the camera here. I like that I can sit it up, turn the knob, press the buttons, and it won't fall over. With the A-Ning, which is of course an excellent meter, it just doesn't want to stay up very well. The meter K, pretty good. It's not quite as stable. The one thing that I don't like about the meter K is separate selections for AC and DC. I like that the voltage selection here is on one and I can just switch between them, no trouble. But that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's life with the Unity UT61E after a few months. I still like it as much as I did the first day, and I still recommend it. Any of you guys have one? What the heck have I got all over my hand? Huh. All right. If you do, leave a comment below. Tell me about what your favorite multimeter is. Even if it's a Fluke 87.5, I mean, or 87V, I don't care. Let me hear about your favorite multimeter. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Okay, let's pick the winner for the Bolt IoT kit 
giveaway. And the winner is Brian Massey. Brian Massey. Brian, please email me your shipping information. My email address is arduino0169 at gmail.com and we'll get your uh, kit out to you. Thank you very much everybody who entered.